Is your office treating COVID? What are some of the things that you're seeing that may work well uh, from a natural perspective? You know, I've seen a few things out there that I encourage my patients to consider. What's happening with COVID in, in your office? Yeah, so we're not treating COVID patients per se. We are treating patients, um, uh, not even treating, I should say, we're preparing patients that want it, that are you know, asking for it to boost their immune response, to be prepared for it, to have those you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, um, uh, you know, supplementation or IVs, mink, zinc, magnesium, you know, giving them melatonin, everything, and basically trying to reduce, if you do get, coronavirus by any chance, then you're, you're basically your um, uh, risk of having any type of real serious adverse symptoms to it would be greatly reduced. And we've seen this across the board in the data. All the places that you saw that were giving the vitamin C, vitamin D, they, they showed a reduction in this. And I would even say that there is, I spoke with Dr. Weber from Germany who has a Weber laser and he went to Iran, was telling me because he couldn't do this in Germany at the time because the hospitals wouldn't allow him. But in Iran, he had connections there and he was going in and applying intravenous laser and he was doing using different colors. He was usually using the UV laser for okay. intravenously applying it. And these were patients in the hospital, severe symptoms from COVID. And he said the results were, you know, really uh, significant that they were being released from the hospital. Their symptoms were greatly reduced. And the, these patients, he wants to publish study on it, were, were basically, you know, this was a wonderful prophylactic treatment in a sense and also treatment itself. I don't like to go in that realm of what is the treatment for COVID because to me, everyone's different. I would never treat COVID. I would treat the patient who has a condition, who has a viral infection, just as if it were EBV or any other viral infection where you have to treat it by what is allowing it to persist. What is it allowing it to become? So, you know, what is allowing that cytokine storm to suddenly rip apart and everything? And how do you do that for this patient? So the idea of a singular treatment, again, would go against everything we believe in as an innovative medicine approach. However, with that said, UV treatments in general, you know, a lot of people uh, uh, heard, I think, the past President Trump talking about different types, but he was really, I think, referring to oxidative treatments in general um, uh, with some of this. So UV hydrogen peroxide or all is wonderful for, for killing off any um, bacterial or viral agents. You see the same with ozone therapy. You see the same with UV light right. through this. And right. so I think there are, there are options out there that aren't necessarily the cure, the treatment, they are a means to improve immune response, reduce viral replicacy, and improve the general situation of the patient, regardless of who they are. We know right. that nine out of 10, I think, hospitalizations were in someone with comorbidity, obesity, something like that. So why wouldn't we then address that 90% right away and say, well, let's try and get them healthy. Unhealthy people respond poorly to any infection. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Yes, COVID is very kind of uh, more virulent and, and a little bit more of a threat to many people. However, to some, as we know, athletes didn't even know. Why is it that some don't even know they have it and don't have symptoms and others react so poorly? I believe it's just a very opportunistic virus in a sense, right. as they all try and be. This one's just successful at it. So the, the best thing you could do is just improve your state of health to where you may not even know you ever had it and just find out by mean way, just as many, we may be sitting here right now with different viruses in us, as we know, all those trillions of them, right. some of them are not ones we like very much and can become opportunistic given the circumstance, given where we are, immune systems, our terrain. So terrain improvement, detoxification, and immune stimulation is really what we are suggesting to patients, not for COVID, but just for everything, for life in general. And will absolutely, in case COVID uh, is an infection for you, would reduce symptomatology and, and hopefully make it an asymptomatic type of case. Yeah, well, I think that's the right, the right focus. Focus on strengthening the immune system, prepare your body, uh, which is what we're, like you just said, we're, we should be preparing our body for all this stuff. There's a couple of three word thoughts I share with patients in my treatment rooms they're basically the same thing. Live as if yeah, and, and act as if, you know, because it is going to happen. You know, you're going to stub your toe, you're going to get a cut, you're going to, you know, how do you, how do you give your body, you know, the, the chance to do the best it can when it does face a battle and sometimes a, an all out war. 
Yes. Yeah. If it's cancer or whatever it may be, how do you give your body the chance in preparation? It, that's the hardest thing to teach because, again, we're waiting mm. for the light to come on rather than it, changing our oil you know, along the way. And, uh, and so I love that's your emphasis because I think that's a proper emph- emphasis. And maybe that will bring down the fear in patients a little bit because they've been so inundated with you know, the boogeyman approach that's yeah. out there. Uh, And this is the only thing you can do. And and there's so much more you can do. And there's so many doctors out there doing great things. And yeah, nebulized hydrogen peroxide or IV hydrogen peroxide, you know, ozone, uh, the different, you know, vitamin A, D, C, uh, magnesium, zinc, iodine, you know, there's just so much out there that, you know, people can do. And if they start to build that confidence, they won't be afraid. That'll help them minimize their chances of a weak immune system that's going to be susceptible to the disease, as well as if you do get the disease, you've been confident, you've done everything right, you'll be able to navigate it better as you go through it. So I I love uh, where you're at on that. 